Hey, everybody, it is Lauren Delisa Coleman, and I am so excited to bring you this next massive block of interviews that we're doing at the Tribeca Film Festival. I know you're seeing this first one via Zoom, but guess what? We're going to be doing a bunch this time in person as well, but this is the inaugural one, and I'm so happy to be able to snag these two. This will be a really, really fun interview. I'd love for you to join me in welcoming Alison Roberto, who is the director and co-producer, and uh, Landon LaRue, who is the writer and her fellow co-producer of a really wonderful, it's horror comedy film called Girls Night In. I know just by the title, you can barely like stand to hear what's going to go on. Um, this is, I think, really just amazing, but it's also really amazing their kind of professional backgrounds and how they pulled this together. It's not like the usual style. And I've got some mad award-winning women with me. I can't wait to get into this interview with you. You guys, thank you so much for taking out the time to join us, especially because Allison, you are there based in LA. We were talking offline. She just had a baby. So it's a little bit bigger premiere, <laughs> just keeping her there. But Landon is holding it down for the team here in New York from her hotel room, getting ready to hit everything at Tribeca. So you guys, again, thank you so much. Let's start as we always do with who would like to, you know, have the honor of giving us a synopsis of Girls' Night In. I'll let Allie go with it. Okay. Oh, okay. I was going to hand it to you, Landon, but I'll take it. <laughs> so, Girls' Night In. Uh, the synopsis would be it's it's based on the Bechdel test. It's a satire, genre bending satire horror based on the Bechdel test. And um, it's uh, we it was a COVID passion project that Landon and I um, had put together because all of our out of friend you know out of work friends in the in the industry were like bored and needing something to do and we all wanted to create a project so we we shot this in one overnight over Valentine's weekend and <laughs> and um, put this film together. It was so much fun with friends um, who all came together to make it happen. But um, so it's it's the story of these two two girls that are having a, a night home together, uh, so a pizza and wine night. And um, Landon wrote a hilariously funny script um, that really kind of takes the Bechdel test and puts a lot of satire uh, underneath it and turns it into this film that, um, that just really bridges together horror and comedy so well. And it's, it, it, it was just a pleasure to, to work on. So. Thank you so <laughs> much for that. And I just would like to um, ask you to add um, just really quickly for clarification sake, in case anybody's watching, doesn't know what the Bechdel test actually is. Oh, of course. So the Bechdel test was created in the mid eighties by Alison Bechdel, and it looks at works of fiction, um, film, TV, novels, writings, things like that. And are there two women in a scene? Um, and are they only talking about men to pass the Bechdel test? They have to be talking about something else. It has to be, um, they have to have a roundness to their characters. And we weren't used to that um, quite a few years ago. We're seeing that a lot more now, which is amazing. Um, but so we wanted to take this idea of these kind of characters that were so hyper fixated on, on just uh, the, the, the men in their conversation and take that to a new level kind of satirically. Uh, when it came to that uh, that test and and the film itself, so and then it kind of takes this comedic turn uh, somewhere halfway through, um, and yeah, it that's what the thank you has so been. much for that. Yeah, it's yeah. it is um, like such a joy to watch, and I can't wait to kind of get into this conversation with you guys about just kind of how you decided to sh to shoot. I know that um, a lot of it, I feel, was more like just kind of tighter shots where you kind of felt like you were like right there with them. And I know that there was probably a lot of intention behind that. So, but first let's hear how the two of you kind of met and began to collaborate. Yeah, I mean, so we met through a mutual friend to collaborate on a television series. So we were working on a television series and then um, COVID hit and all of us were kind of, inside and um you know we kind of put that to the side and we're trying to just you know we're disinfecting our groceries like just trying to survive <laughs> right and um ali actually was offered to direct a feature film like a fully funded feature film like kind of 
a, the dream, you know, for a director. And so um, she gets this feature, she reads the script and in her head, she's, I'm, I'm like talking for Allie. She's, she's just like, uh, like this, this is weird. It, 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 I'm not sure. Like, I don't feel good. My gut doesn't feel good, but you know, let's, let's see what like Landon would think. And she was like, I think that Landon could rewrite it and then possibly turn it into something that makes her feel better. And then I read it and I was like, your gut was right. This is not great. <laughs> like, we found it super problematic. It was a bit misogynist, a little like, you know, um, it did not pass the Bechdel test. <laughs> it, it was very much um, kind of, uh, it was just problematic. It was problematic, mm. you know, about women, about women's rights, about bodily autonomy. And that's something that we did not agree with. And that happened around the time of the insurrection. And so a lot of our rights, you know, even still to this day are being attacked. And so we were just like, even if I rewrote it, I was like, this is a full down to the studs <laughs> and rebuilding it. Mm. And then, you know, the person who wrote the original, you know, script would have stayed on as a producer. And we just, we just did not see eye to eye on things. And so, you know, Ali and I went to the side and we were like, it, it really does suck to, you know, get awarded like a feature and then be like, no. And, <laughs> and this, and it was, um, you know, a big one too. And so we, we, we were just, we just felt better if, you know, we would work on our own thing that we would fund ourselves and feel proud of and want to defend and like, you know, show people even like we sure. even like for the feature, we were like, do we go under an alias? And we just like made fun of like different names that we could like give ourselves to like, you know, pretend we never did this. Um, but, you know, um, with the short, I've had it, in like my desk drawer for a few, like a long time, it was years of it. And, um, that was, and then, you know, so Ali was like, is there something that we could shoot like a short narrative, maybe a scene from our TV series. Um, and then I pulled this one out and, you know, it actually did not need that much updating. The only mm -hmm. updating that was done was right after casting because I knew the actresses so well and I know their voice and their mannerisms. I did update it so that the dialogue was a bit more in their voice. Mm -hmm. Well, that I think takes a lot of strength to be able to maintain one's both professional, but it sounds like even more personal integrity. And if you had done it, um, it probably would have been um, very problematic, you know, anyway, it's not like, I don't know, fixing like a pipe or something. This is a very um, emotion driven, um, you know, kind of area that we are all working within. So if your passion isn't there, it's just not going to turn out right. So kudos to you guys, um, you know, just to be able to, to maintain that, because I know that that probably wasn't easy. Um, I think that maybe that perspective comes from, um, you know, your career backgrounds. And I wrote this down just as I was preparing for this, because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. You guys between you have just like such like, I don't know, just killer, not even just resumes, but like the accolades, right? So Cleo's for work on Darren on Avin, uh, Aronofsky, sorry about that, mother. Um, and then you, uh, Allison, I mean, with the grand Cleo for the Matrix Re Resolution. Oh my gosh, I can't even say it, like Resurrection. Sorry, you guys. I've been like really like holding it down, <laughs> like doing all this pre-production for our other interviews. So it's like me going on a few hours worth of sleep. So sorry about that. But I mean, yeah, that's just really, um, I think, just so remarkable. Um, and I think between that and then also like, you know, Allison, your day job just happened to be working at, you know, Warner Brothers Pictures. Could you talk a little bit about what you like kind of both have done and continue to do and, you know, what you brought or how you brought that really to the success of this effort? Sure. Yeah. Oh, well, Landon works at Warner Brothers, so she could tell you all about that. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, no, I um, I was a creative director for MTV in New York for about a decade um, and kind of came into the industry that way. I went to SVA in New York and then uh, oh, went great. straight into working at MTV and kind of learned to do everything there from directing photo shoots and video shoots and working on huge campaigns for the VMAs and all of that. Um, and then I decided to move out to LA and to try um, directing full-time because that's really what I had fallen in love with. Started working with Netflix a, a ton um, and a lot of other really amazing clients. And yeah, started directing commercials, music videos. Um, and then of course this short film that 
um, yeah, we're so excited to, to be a part of. And then Landon, because you're in a yeah. very, you know, specific part of Warner brothers pictures, which, you know, I w- I'm really curious to hear more about. And then again, how you kind of applied, um, just really the expertise that you've built there to this, because one's more on the digital side. And of course this is, you know, traditional film. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, I got into like storytelling, like writing very, very early on. Um, I wrote my first book, like when I was in the first grade and it was like four pages and it was about a rabbit, but it was something that's always been inside of me. So I went to NYU for a film and television production with a focus on screenwriting. And, um, of course, graduated during the worst economic downturn of, you know, our generation. So uh, moved out to went to uh, grad school because that made sense. Bring on more debt while, you know, <laughs> the recession was happening, but uh, ended up, you know, going to grad school and then figuring out that I really did not like that and going out to L.A. and trying to, you know, get into um anything that had to do with writing. So I got into copywriting that got me into, you know, working at ad agencies and, and then working at um, Annapurna as one of their, uh, you know, directors of creative content, um, which then got into like custom shoots and like, you know, making EPKs more fun and like more, uh, you know, instead of like a B2B more of a, you know, towards consumers and getting them interested in that kind of um, BTS stuff and, you know, for filmmakers and our talent. Um, And then after that was then scooped up by Warner Brothers, where I still do that. And also now, you know, dabble in digital publicity and I work very closely with the filmmakers. And I think that really helps me in creating because I learn so much from them and, um, and, you know, their different styles and their different um, visions and like what drives them, uh, where they put their, um, you know, focus on where they let others take the reins. And Mm -hmm. so it's, it's been a really great learning experience for me being super close to them. Um, And I think that's another thing that I've learned from Warner brothers is like budgets, timelines, management, And so it's just like, um, and making, you know, something that is not only that we're excited about, but something that is also palatable by the broad audience. I think that's a really great way to put it. So uh, talk to me a little bit about how long um, this took to shoot. And while you were shooting it, did you have any idea that, hey, we're going to actually be premiering this at like Tribeca Film Festival 2022? (laughs) Like, (laughs) did that come about at all or what? Uh, certainly not. <laughs> that definitely was not a conversation that, that evening. Um, I think, uh, one of the benefits of Landon and I both working in short form content and the music video world and, and, um, and Landon as well in the social space, mm-hmm. it helped us do this really quickly because we only had one overnight to shoot this. Um, so that kind of like hustle and, and working in the short form world where everything is like such a fast oh, yeah, turnaround, very cool. mm-hmm. I think it really helped us, you know, it kept our, keep our crew kind of tight. Um, it was COVID. So we had to keep it kind of tight and small and, but we still had to move quickly and we had a lot to shoot in one overnight. Um, as you can imagine, we only did the blood scene at the end once it was one take, uh, because we couldn't reset it. Um, and Jess and, and, and Skylar were just so brilliant and nailed it. I mean, we're so great. Like, okay, no pressure. Like we only have no pressure, but we're just going to do this once. So just don't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like don't do anything wrong. I took them Uh, aside and I was like, if you laugh through this, cause they were like, we're all really close. So (laughs) they, they kept like giggling during things. And I was like, if you laugh, I swear. (laughs) Like, I know. Too? They right. didn't think they, they literally it, killed yeah. it. They pulled it off beautifully. Um, but yeah, it was one overnight. It was a crazy, crazy long night. It was Valentine's weekend. And um, it was just a passion project between all of us and something landed. And I wanted to do because we were writing this series together and we wanted to create something. And um, never, ever did we ever think that it would end up in Tribeca. We cert- we had talked about it as like our dream it was our festival. First choice. Yeah. Our first choice dream festival. But I don't think we ever thought this little self-funded project would end up in Tribeca. Like we well, don't think we really so, nice. so then that. you guys applied and sent it in and then 
you know, what was it like when you got the notification? (laughs) So they call you like they actually pick up the phone. Like old school school style. No. Yes. And they call you and it's just, it's, I thought I was being pranked. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, this is not real. Um, But yes, no, they call you because they want to talk to you and they want to hear your reaction and they want to ask you about the film and because they get super into it and they're amazing. And other festivals do not call you. I've applied to a lot. Believe me, they don't call you. Um, I was in shock. I was just like, oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Now, wait, what month was this? (laughs) Hmm. What month was this? Um, I want to say this was back in, I don't know. When did I tell you land in March, April, March, mm, March, I think and then you, asked, and you got the call no, and then not. you, did you did. like, Oh, wait, hold on. I need to like conference in Landon or yeah, like so, you call uh, Landon she, after how does it all go down? So like, because when you have like the day job, right? Like you, you have like those hours that you're working <laughs> and, and you're on calls all day. And so I get a text from her. She goes like, uh, she called me first. I couldn't answer because I was on a call. Then she texts me and she's like, call me back. And I go, <laughs> I was like, the only like reason people call on the phone anymore is, you know, if someone's in jail, if someone's in the hospital or like, <laughs> right, you do me. not want that call. You don't yeah. do not want right. someone saying, call me. Cause yeah, call me back. Like, no. like, yeah. yeah. Something has happened. And so I'm like on this conference and I like text and I was like, I'll, I'll call you as soon as I'm off this call. And she goes, don't worry. It's good. And I, was well, like, I followed up because yeah, I realized yeah. I that just, it probably like, was alarming. Yeah. And um, so then she calls me and then she she's so excited, but she tried to keep it very like, you know, tamped down. And she is just like, so I got a call and I was just like, yes, <laughs> she was just like, and, and then like a low Batman voice, we got into Tribeca. <laughs> what? And then she's like, Tribeca called me, we got in. And I was like, and I, I was just like, this is bullshit. Like, okay. Too like, funny. Too funny. And yeah, I was like, there's no like way. A lot of, I don't know. What would you just call it? Like, reserve because i would have been like texting all caps you know we got into yeah. tribeca and like a million mo- emojis and the champagne bottle emoji and yeah. the, the party emoji like i wouldn't even be able to wait so you're going to be the perfect mom because there's no way i would have had that kind of like constraint there's no way no way i wanted i had to hear her reaction in person which you know on the phone like after yeah. two though yeah. but there's the initial like emoji texting craziness so i i love oh that you gosh. could wait and that you guys could share that in person <laughs> and it's a yeah. shame you can't both be you know together like know. live right now you're yeah. gonna have to do like facetime like walking around with your phone landing like yeah. All yeah. so now how long are you going to be here at the festival landed um, not too long. I'm only here until the 13th. Um, I okay, do have some Monday. So there's, yeah. a, you know, a good amount of time. Yeah. Is there anything that you are particularly excited about um, either seeing or any talks that you are really looking for? Oh my to? gosh. If someone could get me into that Taylor Swift talk, <laughs> it's been sold out. And I was just like, I just want to go to the Taylor Swift talk. And even though you're an NYU alum, you couldn't pull any strings. I know, like, right? Now that was, she's what, like an honorary, you know, she's, she's an honorated PhD. And I was just like, girl, we are now like Bobcats together. Can we, can we oh, do something? Too funny. Too funny. And, oh, um, no, well, you'll have to find, I don't know if that's at BMCC or at Spring Place, but you'll have to pretend you're, um, working and go through the back. Yeah, I know. I was I've like, done I, that before <laughs> for something else. And that's all I'm saying, you guys. And it worked. <laughs> I would put on all and, uh, my that's all I'm saying. and just be like, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> that's how you have to play it. Yeah. Um, but um, but also, um, not, you know, not giving any suggestions. Anything else besides Taylor Swift? Um, also, or any films that you're particularly excited about? I am so excited to see all the films that are in our block because our block is called Call Me Crazy. And I was like, I need to know what these other films <laughs> like, because ours is pretty crazy and out there. And yeah. um, it's and also it's I've been trying really hard in my personal vernacular not to say crazy or call people crazy or insane. Um, I think that, you know, that's something that we that or hysterical that's something that's usually assigned to like women you know who like speak up and so I wanted to like kind of take that back but you know when you so when I hear that I was just like that that has to that's 
that means something here and that they named this block that. And I was just like, I'm so excited to see it. I've been reading those synopsis. I've been trying to like, I have Google alerts for those filmmakers being like, what are like, you are not a joke. Oh no. <laughs> that is so great. Oh my gosh. Wait, and like I said, you're going to have to like, you know, FaceTime like Allison yeah. in to be able to, you know, get the audience reaction yeah. right after and, and certainly yeah. so, so much more. What do you guys hope that people take away from the film though, you know, after the premiere, is it intended to be, um, you know, kind of just light or fun? Is it to be able to look at women maybe in a different light? Is it all of that and more? I mean, what's like each of your ideal? Ideally, uh, so I'm working on the feature version of it. Oh, Um, congrats. Thanks. Uh, And hopefully people will want to see more of like Becca and Delaney and, you know, the, you know, little shenanigans they get into. Um, But I like in my ideal world, people will be entertained by it because when you're entertained by something, you absorb the content a lot more. You're more apt to like rewatch it on your own. Um, But it's I wanted to kind of explode the tropes of, you know, how we represent women in like film through the satirical lens. And hopefully people will talk about it and then have a better understanding of the Bechdel test um, and, you know, kind of def- like have a muscle memory or a reflex when they watch or read things being like, oh, this character has a name. That's great. This passes. Yes. And Allison, anything for you or are you kind of in sync with Landon on this? Oh, I'm in sync with Landon for sure. I want people to be entertained. I think they're, um, I think some people, a lot of people really have gotten it and have gotten the satire and not taking it literally. I know we were both concerned about that in the beginning, mm. but I, I do think that it, re- it resonated with a lot of people and it was the right time for something like this to come out and be accepted and understood. Um, so yes, being entertained. And then it, like Landon said, it's something that'll stick with you more. Um, and especially with comedy, it's something that'll kind of sink in and, and, and stay there and, and, and people will be more aware of. And, and we're seeing such great layered female characters now um, in TV and film in a way we never have before. So that's, that's really exciting. And we just hope this helps that continue. And then of I- course, the the feature film we're yeah for sure to, i think that that's that great. What I was going to say is that what's next in addition to of course raising your infant and whatever <laughs> else is going on at you know warner brothers digital is there that's like the main like next step yeah i mean what's what i find really interesting especially being a you know, a woman in this world or like, you know, identifying as a woman is that um, we have, we are multifaceted. We have multiple responsibilities. Um, A lot of folks are like, oh, it's a balancing act. But for me, I think that it's more of a juggling act because we'll prioritize one thing and then like kind of put things on the back burner and then like, you know, shuffle them up. It's never equal. You can't pay the same amount of attention to a child, to a feature, to your day job. It is a juggling act. And so when folks are like, what's up next? And I'm just like, in which realm? Because, you know, right. in, our own, in, in our own individual being, we are the multiverse. It was like, right. women are right. the multiverse. We have so many different dimensions to us that people are like, so, fo- and it's so easy for a guy to just be like, oh yeah, I'm focusing on, you know, this feature. And I was just like, cool. I'm, you know, focusing on, on keeping my, my, you know, women's rights. So that's great. (laughs) (laughs) I see exactly what you mean. And then of course, if you add even ethnic background to that, that means even more juggling, right? Absolutely. um, I definitely wish you guys continued success in all of your juggling. It's obviously paying off. How can um, everybody keep in touch or up to date? What have you with um, the feature, what you guys are doing. Do you have um, social platforms for the short or landing page, et cetera? Like now is the time to promo. Ali, do you want to go first? <laughs> oh yeah. Our, so um, our Instagram for the film is at girls night in movie. movie. Um, and my personal is at Ali Roberto, A- A-L-I-R-O-B-E-R-T-O. Okay, oh, wow. great. Thank you yeah. so much. And Landon? I am at Landon LaRue on all platforms. 
Every time an emerging platform comes up, I jump on and snag my username. Boom, there you have it. Look out in the other yeah. Landon LaRue's out there. And there you are guys, a few. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, you guys, anything else to add before we wrap up? No, I mean, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. This has been yeah. such a pleasure and it's been like, it's been very easy to talk to you, which I can't <laughs> say is for like all like interviews. So thank you. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And I thank you guys for taking out the time for sure. I'm very excited for you. Um, you know, especially like you said, with juggling all types of things to be able to do this, do it well, and then have it recognized, right? Because you already know that you've done something and, and you love it, but it's always very nice to have that reflected back. And that's a really special time. So I hope that you get to enjoy it, whether, you know, near or far. And um, I, yeah, I can't wait to see what like comes up next. I mean, really. So you guys, thank you again. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely click on the very next video because we'll be in person and you can see us all like more 3D than this. And we can't wait to do it. We're going to be at the wonderful Roxy Hotel, which is just a stone throw away from the headquarters of Tribeca, which is Spring Place. And I am so excited, even though I will be up when it's dark tomorrow to start prepping for that. Excited to bring it to you with our crew. So thank you so much for watching. I am, as always, Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series here at Filmio.